So in Luke 1, 26 through 28, 38, um, I'm going to read this now. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be a very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come unto you, upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. So during in this passage, um, one of the things that I like is that, besides where it says, um, the word of God will never fail. Um, one of the things I like the most is, how can this be since I'm a virgin? Um, and I want to pose this question to you guys. It's like, how do you believe this unbelievable thing? It's, it can sound like a lot of fables and fairy tales, um, especially if you're coming in here from the outside, if you're coming in here as um, someone who didn't grow up in the church, didn't believe all of these stories growing up, fresh perspective on this. How do you believe this unbelievable thing? So it says a little bit in the chat saying such a beautiful miracle just for us. Yeah, it is. I agree. How do you believe this unbelievable thing? I mean, my take on it is if you listen to actual scientific explanations of stuff, it sounds just as fairy tale-ish. Like if you read an actual paper on like, uh, what's it called? Uh, the microphysics. I forgot the name of it. It's like, it's like you're, you're talking about literal magic. And so if literal scientists say things like that, it's like, why would the most history accurate history book in history be wrong about this so do you have any reverence or anything you can look up about that because now you got me curious what were they talking about in the microscience um i forgot the uh not particle physics um oh god i don't know why it just i don't know no no the really really small stuff smaller than atoms um oh now my brain's gone blank too so yeah look it up and send it <laughs> Well, I can tell you Homework. exactly what one of them is. Like, if, oh, okay. uh, you when you send these things at a target that shows like where they show up, right? It'll show as a wave unless you have a sensor looking at it, and then it stops doing it. It's literally these particles when you watch them, they do something different than when they're not being watched. <laughs> it they know no they're being watched. <laughs> yeah. Science has zero explanation for how this works. And like, but trust us, dude. Trust us. Like kids a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you listen to things like the Big Bang Theory that literally denies laws of physics. Like, because you have to have every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. So if there's a Big Bang, something had to cause it. But nothing causes it. Nobody ever attempts to explain that. Yeah. It's like Something caused it. Yeah. yeah, you're weaving the same fairy tales that you accuse, you know, yeah. believers of. I'm not, like, I'm not saying anything against the Big Bang because it could have very well happened that way, but something caused it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm saying there's no proof that it did happen. And really, ninety percent of science, when you get down to it, it's, dude, believe me, trust me, I have a degree. It's like, well, the there's this book here that has a perfect record of history that is proven. That says some things kind of along the lines of that happened. Yeah. And you're like, that's not true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's just my thought on it.
Yeah. Anyone else? It's a good thought. Anyone else? DJ, how about you? I'm gonna call DJ out. Sorry, I have double double mute on. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that's it's like interesting. I think because I think that God like interacts with people with what they need. Um, so some people are more intellectual, right? And so s things of science and and ar archaeology really connect with some people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> on the other hand, it, some other people might be more of experience. They're not necessarily interested in science. That type of um, maybe proposition wouldn't maybe be compelling to them. So I kind of find it just God just to speaks to people in, in different ways to reveal like who he is and his importance. And, and, um, and, and at the end of the day, I, what I appreciate about the, like when you read through the scriptures, at least in my, in my opinion is it, it does deal with like science and, and at, archaeology and all these other things but mm -hmm. kind of at the end of the day it does admit this is by faith like by faith we believe the worlds are created by faith noah by faith you know and so there is this aspect it doesn't hide that that there is an uh, there's a core element that we can't see this and maybe we can't even prove it although i think we probably could like mm -hmm. if we just sat down and really had a good conversation about it but yeah. um at the end of the day it's it's that faith that, that god's looking for and so um I find that to, for me, at least, not in all circumstances, but in many circumstances to be like a, a really powerful tool to, because a lot of the people we interact with, like in your MMO church, really have some great compelling arguments about why God doesn't exist. I and mean, you're talking about like human suffering and you're talking about all these other things and you're like, okay, <laughs> yeah, you're bringing up some good points. Yeah. Uh, but I think what really connects with people sometimes, I mean, not all the time, is that idea of like, well, the Bible doesn't shy away that this is by faith, like just mm -hmm. to believe that. Um, yeah. So I don't. Know. Those are my my two cents. A little bit, a little bit says in the chat, um, like a mustard seed, faith like a mustard seed. Yeah. Which chat are you in? Um, in game. Oh, in game. <laughs> nice. Uh, let me correct myself. It was quantum physics. Quantum physics, and, okay. And along with what Soto said, um, the, the faith aspect of religion is also applied to science and anything that you see the term theory on, theory of relativity, uh, theory of evolution, Big Bang theory, any of that, it's called a theory because it, it absolutely cannot be proven and it's literally well, taught off of faith <laughs> um, by the scientific standards uh, a theory is the most likely explanation that okay. can't be proven. They they haven't found proof of it yet. And if you look okay. all over, there's just mountains of theories that are just taught as true science, but have never actually been proven. Okay. Because it's just the best guess we have, and that's uh, and I look at that almost the same way as you know the Bible or something. It's like it's the best you can come up with, and it makes the most sense. I grew up in the church, so I mean, I grew up believing a lot of it, uh, but even still, there are things that I needed to start reading for myself in the Bible to separate out what lies I was taught by my pastors and and the adults in my life versus what the Bible actually says about things. Um, uh, my answer is, so... How many of you have seen the original Matrix film? And I'm not talking about the ones that um, I did not count as being in the Matrix world. All the sequels. Just the original. <laughs> Has anyone seen the Matrix? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely. so... So, Neo doesn't need to dodge bullets. Why? Why doesn't he need to dodge bullets? Because when the time comes, he doesn't need to. <laughs> That's what Morpheus said, at least. <laughs> because literally by faith, they just can't hit him. He knows how it, the Matrix works. And he can manipulate it because he knows how it works. So if you believe that God created everything, and he knows how everything works, then... A virgin birth is perfectly logical. But if you don't believe in the creator, then 
you may need to start there. And then if you don't believe in God, then you would need to start there. It's, it's step by step, baby steps to get there. But at some point there is a measure of faith. And Mary was brave enough to ask that question. It's like, how can this be? Because she was staring at this angel and like every time an angel messenger of God appears in front of someone, the first thing that they have to say is don't be afraid. Because you know those angels are freaky, scary. Because they're all, they're powerful. <laughs> so she was brave enough to ask him that question. It's like, how can this be? It's like, do you guys ever feel like there are certain questions that you're not allowed to ask? Like, particularly about God and Christianity and so forth. Um, where do you go to find your answers to those things that you don't feel you're allowed to ask? If that's the case. Now, what do you mean by um, who you're allowed to ask? You mean like the a, church in general? Do you ever feel like there are questions that you... You're just really afraid to ask the question. <laughs> Usually most of my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, I guess I go to someone I can really trust. That um, I feel wouldn't judge me for asking what I need to ask. Yeah. For me, I'll read commentaries, I'll pray, because um, God does use the Holy Spirit to speak to us through Scripture, so we use that as a way of discerning things when we pray and study. And I go to the Bible Project a lot because they're respected Bible scholars and um, other people whose perspectives that I respect that I trust, again, like you, will not judge me for asking the question. Um, I, I want to make sure that y'all know that it is okay to ask questions. Um, now, it's up to you whether or not you feel safe asking questions and who you ask those questions to. But I do want you to know that it is okay to ask questions. People were constantly asking Jesus questions and they felt safe doing so. Then that's the kind of community that I want to bring about here as well.